Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you to the organizers. So I'm going to talk about monodromy groups of the Konsevich-Zorichko cycle. I will first start defining more or less what monodromy groups are and show you that there are some constraints to what monodromy groups can be. And then, since there are these constraints, we're interested in which groups are actually realizable given these constraints, which ones are really exist as examples. And then I'll, I'll show you a proof of uh, realize that some of them can be realized, some that were known up until now. So, what are monodromy groups? So, a monodromy group is simply the image of uh, the map that goes from pi 1 of m, where m is an affine invariant manifold or orbit closure. Same thing. Uh, going to SP to the yeah SP. Let's say H one. Okay. This, um, this is a topological model for our surfaces in M. Model topological, and then. OK, there are many variations. We can define this as going to cohomology. We can define it with real coefficients, complex coefficients. There are many, many ways, many variations of this. But this is more or less the, the idea. And what is this map? So we take a loop inside of the affine invariant manifold and find the orbit closure. It winds around somehow in the modular space. And since the modular space is not simply connected, it will do some, it will induce some action on some fibers. We have to define where. So where is this defined? Over the Hodge bundle, which is bundle, which is the bundle over M fibers. I don't know how to write fibers. I will write it like this. Uh, Fibers equal to H1. This is the Hodge bundle. So at each point, we put a copy of the homology of our model surface. And each time we move, we somehow deform this homology to a nearby homology. And this gives, you, gives us a bundle. And we are interested in how does this deformation homology uh, what, what are these information homology when we come back to the same point, when we do a loop in the pi one? This is the orbifold fundamental group for people who know. It's not the regular fundamental group. But it doesn't matter. So it's just a technical issue. So then, um, we're interested in not the entire uh, not the entire monodromy over the Hodge bundle, but over possibly some sub bundle of the Hodge bundle. So a flat sum bundle, which are the bundles we're interested in, is a bundle that is flat for the Gauss Mannin connection. What does this mean? This means that we're identifying fibers. We take a subspace. This, uh, what a subbundle mean? It, instead of having the, the entire homology over a point, we have a subspace of the homology. And the way we send the subspace to a nearby point is by is in the obvious way. So if we have a surface like this, and then we have a surface like this, we send this curve to this curve. This is what it's saying. It's, we're sending everything in the, in the obvious way. This is b what being flat for the Gauss-Mannin connection means. Um, so
So then there are some constraints to what the, homo what the modern is can be. We're interested in uh, irreducible pieces because sometimes we, we have some sub bundle and we can split it into two complementary vector spaces and in each, in each of them the action is by blocks, it's separately in both, so we're interested in irreducible pieces. And there's a theorem constraining what um, this monodromies over flats and bundles can be. So I'll state it. It's a theorem by Simon Philip. Uh, I'll send it in a full statement so there's no confusion. Is it, is it okay for people in the back with the, yeah? It's here. Sorry? Okay, press harder, okay. <laughs> Push harder. Uh, also raise the screen. Not too much, please. Okay, so then Okay, so we have a flat subbundle. In this sense, flat for the gauss manning connections. And we have zero Lyapunov exponents, so not any flat bundle. Lyapunov exponents are a measure of how fast things grow, these homology classes grow when carried ar ar around by the, by the action in homology. And there are zero Lyapunov exponents, so they grow as uh, slow as possible. And in this case, in any reducible piece, uh, we are assuming reducibility, there is only one non-compact factor in the group of, in the monodromy group, which is equal up to finite index to some things in a list. So there are three possibilities, S U P Q, P bigger than Q, exterior power of S U P one bigger than one S O star to N N odd. These are the only possibilities for the monodromy group. Remember the monodromy group is a group generated by all possible matrices that we get when looping around in the model space or in the affine invariance of manifold. And they're all one of these lists. And this is at the level of Lie group representations. There's another theorem by Simeon in the, in the case of bundles which are not entirely flat, but kind of flat. And this is only at the level of Lie algebra representations, but this is stronger. We have zero exponents and we have a flat subbundle, then the only possibilities for the monodromy group are those groups. Uh, 
So then, once we have a list, the question is, are these groups really there? In, are, there are, are these groups the monodromy of some affine invariance and manifold, some overclosure? Is there a surface that gives you sort of these groups? So this is a question uh, I'm trying to address. Um, so question. So, of course, some things are known. Um, Avila, Mateos, and Yukons prove that S U P Q are realizable. And they use some cyclic covers. Find specific examples using cyclic covers. And we also know that. Um, Theorem by Philippe, Forni, and Mateus saying that uh, S O star six is realizable, and actually S O star six is the same thing as. Uh, the second exterior power of SU one three. Say three one. But this is an accident this is an accidental isomorphism. They don't actually try to construct the second exterior power of SU three one. They build this and then they get this by chance. But so this is the group that they that uh, really it's really there in some sense. Um, So this is basically all we know. Yes, so star n means uh, they are the matrices uh, preserving an orthogonal, uh, let's say, this is orthogonal for some in the quaternionic sense. I can give you the f description like with matrices, but I don't remember it correct now, right now. But it's basically that. Uh, it's the matrices which are orthogonal in the quaternionic way, not in the complex, usual complex way. Um, so yes, this is basically all we know. And so these are OK. This, no, we, we have one, but it's kind of accidental. So this is not OK. And this is OK. We only have one. Of course, it's not OK. So um, yes, what I'll try to do, what I'll try to show you is a proof that many of those can be real actually realized as uh, monodromy groups. Not all of them, but it's a lot. Um, at least, uh, for example, uh, it's a uh, uh, positive density set. So it's kind of a lot. So the proof by um, Philippe Forni Mateos is using square tail surfaces. They use they find explicit explicit square tail surface that realize this monodromy. And I'm trying
to actually extend what they did to find more squelter surfaces that realize more of these quaternionic groups. And as you'll see, the, it's easy to find surfaces that have these groups as a candidate, but to prove that actually the group is really bad, it's not easy. <laughs> so then I'll, I'll show you why. I'll show you what was the problem. So this is number two. Monodromy of square surfaces. So this is something Mateus talked about in his course, but it was really fast. And I, <laughs> I will remember it <laughs> because it's very interesting and it gives us it, it gives us in a very easy way, it gives us candidate surfaces for the for all the, for these groups, but uh, yeah, as I said, the problem is proven. They are really these are the groups that we're getting. So um, it is possible to find these constraints. Using representation theoretical methods. So well, I won't recall what a square surface is. Well, it's just a bunch of squares glued in some way. And we, they have an automorphism group. So let O be, uh, let's say, origami, sh shorter. Same thing as square surface. Um, and let D be its automorphism group. Automorphisms act only by translation. So they have the, the affine part is the identity. They only move the squares around. No. No distortion, no, no stretching or whatsoever. So, this group is a finite group. Representation. This group is a finite group and it induces a natural representation, which is. which is simply taking a curve and moving it around by translation and see what, what you get. See what kind of curve you, uh, you get after the translation. So this is a natural representation of the, of the automorphism group of an origami. And um, by representation theory, by elementary representation theory, it is known that this representation can be split into irreducible components. Reducible representations. So We get something like H1, the entire G model is equal to a direct sum of all the irreducible representations over the real numbers of our group G, the automorphism group, of some irreducible representations. Well, this is what it says irreducible representation to some power. Sorry? Uh, no, in this case, it's with uh, Z coefficients. Oh, OK. Yeah, probably right. 
Yeah. Well, you can do it with this coefficient itself. I don't think it matters very much. So then you can collect all of this, all of these copies of the same representation. Let's call it w alpha. And then we get that we get that we can split our homology into a bunch of subspaces, into a direct sum of subspaces by collecting all the reducible representations. And this, these guys, they are called isotypical components. Or isotypic components, depending on the. Depending on the author. So this is, it has a complicated name, but it's, an, it's not a very complicated thing. It's just collecting all the reusable representations into one single vector space. And then uh, this is splitting, a natural, this is a natural splitting for the automorphism group. But when, when we're talking about the monotonic group of an origami, the action is not only by automorphisms. We also have the affine group, things that stretch the surface, not only translate. So we want to see which part of this splitting are really reducible for the affine group, or some fine version of the affine group. So this, this splitting will not be reserved a priori, because the affine automorphisms don't commute with the, with the automorphism group, but they commute up to finite index. So the group induced by the representation of the affine group Uh, call it row two, but uh, OK. Group induced by the affine group. F. Uh, may not preserve. This splitting. But since uh, G is finite, there exists some subgroup, finite index subgroup. such that um, any element of this group commutes with G. And then when we have something that's commutative, it will, of, of course, preserve the splitting. So we can find, um, since everything we're trying to do is up to finite index, we don't care about this finite index stuff. And we can actually use this group. And then we have some candidates. We have the splitting, which is another splitting coming from the, from the um, representation of the group, of the automorphism group. And then we have the, the affine group preserves it. And we would like to, say, to see if this, group, if this splitting is really irreducible, or does it split further down? And this is, this is basically try, the, solving the problem of the monotomy group. So, yeah. So we can define a division algebra the alpha and 
we have that. The alpha is isomorphic to either R, the complex numbers, or the quaternions. Not the hyperbolic plane, quaternions. So this division algebra comes from just the things that commute uh, with the matrices in our representation. We can define a division algebra. And every division algebra over R is either R, the complex numbers, or the quaternion numbers. So we, have, um, we are going to say that our representation, oh, sorry, I didn't say what. This is a alpha in the reducible representations of G. Given any reducible representation, we can associate a division algebra. And depending on what we get, either R, C, or H, we will get different kinds of representations. In this case, alpha is called real. In this case, alpha is called complex. And in this case, alpha is called, you guessed it, quaternionic. So depending on whether alpha is real, complex, or quaternionic, the, these isotypic components will produce different groups. So assuming that they are reducible, they will produce different monodromic groups. So theorem, which is by Mateus, Yokoz, The group in SP uh. The group induced by this finding index subgroup of the automorphism group is contained in SP if alpha is real, SU if alpha is complex, SO star 2N if alpha is quaternionic. So using representation theory, we can constrain easily, not in a hard way, using spot theory like Simeon. In an easy way, we can constrain what the monogamy groups can be for a fertile surface, just using representation theory and define this representation from the automorphism group to the, to the homology. So then we have, it's not the same list as Siemens because in the other case, we're assuming that, the, that the, we have zero exponents. If we have zero exponents, then this cannot happen. But these are the same. And yeah, we are, although in this case, it's important to see that, to notice that this group uh, is contained in one of these. It's not really one of these. So the, the group that we may actually get SP or get uh, a, a, an exterior power of U, SU P1 or something else as a subgroup of any of those. So we, this, is a, this is a difficult problem, knowing that this group that we're getting, that this representation, this splitting of representation is actually reducible for the affine group, and then no, the, the actual group that we are getting is 
are those and not something smaller. So the problem You see that the automorphism group does not respect this. this the composition is not, is not uh, irreducible for the automorphism group. For the automorphism group, we have this decomposition, which is much smaller. We have much smaller blocks. But to get at, uh, the composition, which is invariant, preserved by the affine group, we glue all of the uh, representations of the same kind. We get today's decomposition, but this, this, there's no, no, nothing telling us that this decomposition is the final one. We may get something smaller. OK. So then. This is the introduction to show you why we're just using origamis to try to get the, these groups and how to build an example. And then I'll show you uh, how to prove that this is really the monogamy group. So what is the example? This is number three, I guess. OK, so we want to find quaternion representations. If, remember that we are trying to get this group. So we want to, these are we're already done, these are already done. We want to get these groups. And to get these groups, we need a group that has quaternionic representations, right? We need these alphas, these irreducible representation alphas, to be quaternionic, at least one of them. And what, what is the group that we will choose? We will choose. Uh, the quaternion group q equal to plus minus 1, plus minus i, plus minus j, plus minus k has a quaternion representation. I mean, it should, but <laughs> by names it should, but it does. This group has a quaternion representation. It's a small group, only eight elements. And we can use this group to find, we can try to find a square to surfaces that have this group as an automorphism group. And then show that the quaternion representation is where the, where the one we're getting in some block. And then try to prove that this is a, gives you a monodromy group that we are looking for. So, yes. The representations <coughs> for this group are, well, let's say one by i, by j, by k. These are real and one dimensional. Of course, when I say the representations, I mean the reducible ones. And some other representation, which is two dimensional and quaternionic. So we want to find a block where the tomorphism group is acting as this representation and not those ones. Um, then, how do we build the surface? This is an easy lemma. By covering uh, 
surface. I know you got me. With trivial automorphism group. Uh, using Q, we get an origami whose automorph automorphism group is Q. What do I mean by that? I mean we have some origami that doesn't have any automorphisms, and then we put eight copies of the same origami. We label them using the elements of the quaternion group. And we move using two generators, as Mateus showed. If we, if, we use, if we move there to the right, we use the generator i. And if we move up, we move the, use the generator j. And we move to the, to the same place that we will have moved in the, in the original surface, but to the, to the new copy, to the copy of the, of the label with i or j or whatever we are. So I'll show you. The picture. This is the, 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 the simplest thing that we can possibly do is cover a torus but using, by using this group. But the problem is that covering a torus gives us the already known to everyone of you, the Volmich now. And this one has a compact monotomy group. Everything is known, so this is not a good example. And then we can do the second most second thing to cover the L, which is the second most uh, second simplest origami after the torus. And we can cover. We label every one of these copies with the with the elements of the quaternion group one i minus one minus i, etc. And each time that we do a gluing of the L. The L is glued like this originally. Uh, each time we do one of this, we, we try to do one of these gluings of the L, we go to the next copy, to a copy labeled, we multiply what the label of, of, our, of, our, of one of our copies was, and use the gluing. So, here I'm showing all of the gluings. If I'm one, I go right, I go to i, and to which side of i? To the same side that I would have gone using these gluings. So this is the idea of the, of the construction. And the L has a, minimal, has, a, has a trivial automorphism group, because it's in a minimal stratum. Any origami in a minimal stratum has a trivial uh, automorphism group. This is something Mateus proved. And then. Um, we can try to understand what the blocks of this, of the, of how does this the homology decompose into blocks in order to get the automorphism, the representation that we want. So, um, okay. Yes, this is only for one case, of course. And then, and then we can generalize this construction by, we can generalize this construction by adding more squares. And all of these L's, all of these L's like done by just constructing an L with squares, with an odd number of squares, have a, belong to a minimal stratum. So, So they have trivial automorphism group. And then we can cover them using the quaternions. And we see some kind of recurrence in the singularities. You see each of them has four singularities, which are colored. And when we add more squares, when we add eight more squares, we see this kind of recurrence. So the, do you have the pointer? OK, so uh, each of these, in, now with 11 squares, I added eight more squares. The, sing the singularity pattern can be 
more or less uh, by induction deduced from the from the previous case. So you see the same singularities there, and then in the middle they have the same singularities as, as the one labeled with k, and then again more or less the same as the one, and we have something else in the middle. But then if I add a squares again, we get the same pattern. So. If n, which is the number of squares in the L, in the stairs, staircase, is equal to 3 mod 8, then the covering belongs to H of 4 n minus 1 to n minus 1 to the 4. And they all have more or less the same singularity pattern. They, all, they, they grow in a linear way, and everything can be understood. So if, we do, if you, do, you add some other number of squares, which is not 8, you get some other patterns, but they, are, they go 8 by 8. So if the one with 5 squares is related to the one with 13 squares, and not to this one. So in order to build a family that is related, we add eight squares at the time. And then uh, we can define h minus of O. Let's call the surface this covering O. h minus of O define as the anti invariant subspace by the automorphism defined by minus one. The automorphism group is Q, is a quaternion group. So we have, for every element of the quaternion group, we have one automorphism. And there is one defined by minus one, which is simply in this picture. Translating copies by minus one, so the, each square of one goes to each square of minus one, each square of j goes to each square of minus j in the, in the same way. Uh, is 4D more n dimensional? And uh, j acts. G acts as the quaternion representation. So this is something that you can, if you read a, a book in representational theory for many of these groups, you can find what the representations are, see how they should act, and look at the table and see which one mark, matches to the matches the, the the representation that you want to get the the subspace that you find the subspace that matches the representation. So the subspace that matches the representation, see. Two is uh, the anti-invariant part for the minus one automorphism, and a way to see this. Well, I, I should have to tell you what these representations are, but all of this act by the identity in some parts. By if any of these representations act by either one, i, j, or k, by the, the identity in some in some subspace, and you can see that in, in this subspace neither i, j, or k act as the identity. And this one is really the identity. Everything is the identity, so. Yes? Um, Matthew introduced us to a regular uh, surface. Yeah. With a, with a group, we've got two generators, and yeah. group square supporting to yeah. uh, horizontal and vertical. And here, you're doing the same thing, but with L shape. Yeah, exactly. It's true that if you've got any origami, and finitely finite group generated by two elements, and you make this. Yeah. If you start with a minimal stratum, the automorphism group of the resulting covering will be your group that you, that you start, the group that you start with. If you start with something in a minimal stratum, you need no automorphisms at the beginning. If you had nothing as automorphism at the beginning other than the identity, then you cover and then you get the group that you want.
Yeah, the H1 splits as usual. And then, uh, yeah, when, when I talk about this, I mean as a subspace, I don't know if there are some anti-invariant parts in the, in the, I guess not, in the crypto-tolerical plane. No, they're not. So yeah, th this, is, this is OK. So I, I mean. You can take any, yeah, you can take any origami with automorphisms and, and, and do this covering, and then you will get some automorphism group, and then you can look at the pieces and, and, and see what representation to get and, and everything. Yeah. So OK, so this is, then we have our candidate, where candidates are these coverings, and they have this, we have our sub, candidate subspace, which is the anti-invariant part. Of this, of the homology for the automorphism minus one, and then <coughs> we have to actually prove that the automorphism group is S O star two n in this case. S O star two. So the candidate monodromic group. is SO star to n. This is for n dimensional, and so we get, because it's quaternions or uh, complexes, depends on the way you want to label indices. So what is the strategy? So for So the strategy is done in three steps. The first one is that uh, show that there are some zero lepton of exponents. In, our, in, in the invariant part in the subbundle H minus. Then we can use the theorem that I studied at the beginning. If there are zero level of exponents, th then the groups are either SO star, zero powers of SUP1, or SUPQ. So, using dimension, dimensional constraints. Rule out uh, the other groups in the list. And I told you there were three steps. If this was just like that, there would be two steps. But assuming irreducibility. What I mean by this is as assuming that the affine group acts irreducibly over this space, that there are no sub subspaces, where it, no sub invariant subspace, and then actually prove irreducibility. So why is uh, just proving reducibility not enough? It's because even if it acts irreducibly here, there are, for example, SP is a subspace, is a subgroup of SL, and they both, both act irreducibly. So acting irreducibly doesn't tell you that the actual group that you're getting is what you want. You need to rule out in some way the other, the other groups, and then prove irreducibility, and then you're OK. Another way to try to do this is to prove, to generate the entire Lie algebra to, to show that the dimension of the Lie algebra is what it has to be. But uh, this is a computationally, I mean, how do you handle the computations? Like for the infinite family? Or, I don't know. I don't know how to do it with the Lie algebra method. Well, proving reducibility is also hard, but in this case, it works. 
so let's say so the first part zero dependent of exponents this is easy it just comes from general facts if our monodromy group is contained in SO star for n odd then it has to have at least four zero dependent of exponents this is something that can be a deduced from uh, Ocelet's theorem and uh, other, other classical theorems. So since the monodromy group is contained in SO star to N, it has at least four zero Lyapunov exponents. And this is for n odd, for n even scale true. So then, so this is one, two, dimensional constraints. So there's a lemma here, which is proving that the other groups in the list are too big to fit into this star if uh, for every n equal to 3 mod 8 up to a 0 density set. So what, what we actually prove is that this up to 0 density part uh, parenthesis, the proof works if and only if n cannot be, be, doesn't belong to the numbers that can be written as binomial coefficients in a non trivial way. So let's say m over k with um, 1. I guess, yeah, with um, one k, let's say r because k is uh, m minus one. So of course, every number can be written as a binomial coefficient or something over one or something over the number minus one or something like that. But if you draw out these trivial cases, numbers that not cannot be written like that, and this. The numbers that can be written like that is a is a zero density set of the of the natural numbers. It's not very hard to prove. And <coughs> then what's left is proving irreducibility. which is actually the hard part. And to do that, basically, we have to use, we have to find elements that act irreducibly over h minus. And what are the elements that we can actually see on an on origami easily? They are then multi -twist. So you just take a cylinder decomposition of your surface, and then you intersect everything that intersects the cylinder decomposition. You add the cylinders in, like Mateus explained in his course. So there's an example of a cylinder decomposition of the surface. So in this case, the direction is minus 1, 3. And it decomposes the surface into a bunch of cylinders. 
we have a curve that intersects, and we add all the cylinders that were intersected in, in a reasonable way. So, and to complete the, I guess I'm out of time. OK. So lemma. This is a meta lemma. That actually using then multi twist, then multi twist are reasonable enough and simple enough that combining them is we can prove irreducibility. And to do this, we need to find many directions and combine them in some way. And this is a lot of computations, which is the most difficult part of the proof. And I will show you the picture. So this direction, minus 1, 3. Then the next direction that we're using is, I think, um, minus 5, 7. The composite surface further. And then can you? I don't know which slide it's. So this decomposes the surface into, it, they are all decomposing the surface into the same number of cylinders. There are eight cylinders there and eight cylinders there, just the cylinders are thinner. And then the next one is like uh, 11 min minus 11, 13. And then it doesn't look simple at all, but there is some regularity in choosing this uh, directions in particular, which is shown, shown by, by the graph obtained by multiplying the origami by the parabolic elements T and S. So this is a st any stairs, any one of the surfaces, not before do doing the cover with any number of squares, even if it's, well, it has to be odd, even if it's not uh, 3 mod 8, has this diagram as the one obtained by multiplying by S and T, which is uh, the same one as the L, the one Mateus showed in this course, exactly the same one. We have uh, two surfaces with one horizontal cylinder and one vertical cylinder there. And this, the gluings in this L, this staircase, are the obvious ones. So just the side, uh, the other side. And we have this diagram, which is very simple, only three elements. And then when we do the cover, we get a much more complicated diagram. But there is some part of the diagram that can be understood, which is this one. So we have now this is the covering. This, uh, this staircase represents the covering. We do S, and then we have a loop obtained by multiplying t of length 2n. And it's in each of them, if we multiply by S squared, we get again to a surface with one horizontal cylinder, which has a loop over it of length n by t. And all of these surfaces have exactly eight cylinders, eight horizontal cylinders. And these are the, 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 surf, the directions that we are trying to obtain. The directions obtained by, we choose the directions so they become the horizontal direction after doing all of this process. And they have some formula, of course. And these directions are nice because they belong to different cusps. Cusps are simply uh, the orbit of t, multiplying t. Uh, all the time. So they belong to different cusps. They're not related by multiplying by t, these final surfaces at the, at, the, at the edge. And they all have exactly eight horizontal cylinders. And they, they are all linear independent. And they are all linear independent between them. They form a basis. If we take many of them, they form a basis of the h1 minus. And this is the, this is the surface, of the, this is the directions that we are using to prove this irreducibility. So thank you. I guess that's it. <laughs>